Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Preston Super Show. I got a good show for you today. I'm going to recap Slam Ball from this past weekend. I know everybody's excited for the NFL season. We all want to see how our teams look. We all want to see our teams compete. If you gamble, you're ready to make some money. I'm going to have my picks up every week for you. Be doing the uh, Green Bay Packers recap for my reel and my video on my social media. And I'll make sure to get that up on the podcast as well. And just stay tuned. There's a lot of cool things coming, a lot of interesting things coming. And, you know, every week Joe's trying to be here and fit it into his schedule. So please give Joe a, a good golf clap right now because he's really busy and he's fitting this in. Two, get these stock picks out that you're not hearing anywhere else. On all the market news and on all the market talk, it's just not happening. And the way Joe's laying it down is very informative. And again, we come on, we tell you right away, we're not licensed financial advisors. Please go do your own homework and your own research. We are not CPA professionals. You need to go out and research these picks for yourself. But Joe's coming in. And he's provided you analysis and an in-depth look at how all of this works out. So let's talk about Slam Ball. Slam Ball this past weekend was great. It really was. You had first the mob versus the rumble. And right away, you were looking like, wow, this team, the mob, they're good. I was getting good vibes, nostalgic vibes, watching the mob just decimate this team, the Rumble, 73 to 36. It was something. I mean, it was really something. And then you had the next game, which was very close, very heated, contested game. Lava versus the Slashers, where the Slashers pulled it out. I mean, they had some performances that were really big for them. But then they had to play the mob after that game, right? So it's like a jam session and skateboarding. You got to go right, you go right back to it. So the mob ends up beating the slashers. They had a little bit more of a rest. They went 62 to 23. That was no surprise. The mob was dominant and they were just better. Um, but the slashers were very tired. So then you get the next slate of games and the Griffins take on the wrath. Very close game, 37 to 42. The Wrath take it. <clears throat> now, everybody is going to enjoy that there's a four point shot in slam ball when you shoot behind the line. If you shoot in front of the line, there's a little bit of room to shoot in front of the line or on the line. It's three points. So that's something to note. Um, and a lot of guys are trying to slam it. You know, and that that's kind of the idea. But the Griffins almost pulled that one out. They they choked it at the end. And I have a little surprise prediction about that Wrath team. Back in the first edition of Slam Ball, when it first came out, early 2000s, the Wrath and the Mob were who me and my brother and my friends argued about who was the best. And... Now it's cool to see those two teams are really good. But I have a prediction because the Wrath, a lot of people are going to doubt. I'm telling you right now, they're going to be one of the featured teams in this league. Um, the Griffins will get better. They got some very athletic guys out there. I was noticing some of those guys were really athletic on the, on the Griffins. And, the, and I think the problem with them was they're just like, it's so new. It's the first week. There's no chemistry. It's not cohesive. You'll see more points in games as it gets more cohesive because defense is hard. You know, one guy jumping on the trampoline, you can't popcorn people off. So it's like really balanced. Um, then this team's gear is like some of the sickest gear for any team I've ever seen. The Ozone, that's so freaking cool. The Ozone, and they're up against Buzzsaw. I'm watching like, oh, wow, okay, Buzzsaw is really good actually. And they, you know, put it on the Ozone. Like, they kind of made him feel like they were little. Beat him 60 to 34 um, in their session. Then Buzzsaw had to go right back, right, play the Wrath. But Buzzsaw stood up to the Wrath. They won. Like, they played back-to-back and won 44 to 32 against the Wrath. But I'm telling you, watch what happens. Next slate of games. 
Okay, this is all over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The Wrath take on the Rumble. Okay, the Wrath puts up 65 points on the Rumble. Their guys are flying out there. Like, there was some vengeance to be had. So they take that one. Here comes the Lava. They're up against the Ozone. Okay, the Lava needs to win because they're just not that good. Like, they're good. I I should say that. They're good, but they're not good at winning. So they have 56 points. And they're like right there. And Ozone sneaks it out 60 points because of foul trouble and just drama. And uh, the next game happens. The Wrath are looking strong, boy. They come out and dominate the Ozone. But the Ozone were tired, man. I'm telling you, it has a big factor. Like the Wrath played the Rumble. You know what I'm saying? But then it's like, hold up. Now the Ozone's going to take on Lava. Whoever wins that is going to take on uh, whoever won the game prior. So the Wrath. So the Ozone takes on the Wrath, and it's like almost a 30-point differential. And the subs aren't going to get you there. The Griffins take on Buzzsaw. Okay, here's Griffins. And and they have talent. But they just play beneath their talent level right now because it's so new. So give them a break. 30 points up, up against Buzzsaw. Buzzsaw drops a 41 on them and uh, takes that game. Now the Slashers go up against the Mob again. And this is a rivalry. This is the first big rivalry. The Mob just still just good, man. 72 points up against the Slashers, 51. And why the Mob and the Wrath are really good, and you'll see Buzzsaw be good, is because they have athletic guys who can, you know, windmill dunk the whole nine. But the point is, is that those guys, they go out there and actually slam into you. And other teams are a little bit more finesse like the NBA, you know what I mean? They're playing a little bit more like basketball where I just got to hop, skip, and then I can get it in. And that's cool, but when those guys that are just as fast as you can get to you, that's when it doesn't work because they'll just blow you up, and then it's a fumble, basically. And now the other the other team gets the ball. Now they're on a fast break, a slam break. Here comes the mob up against Buzzsaw. And here, mind you, Buzzsaw had a good rest. They only put up 41 points, rested some of their guys, actually. The announcers even say, oh, they're going to rest some of their guys. And they go and rest some of their guys. Then the mob takes it to bus off 50 to 31, cap off the weekend. The mob is the champions of week one. 4-0. They didn't lose the whole weekend. And I was really impressed with that team's, like, just performance overall. They brought their coach back from back in the day. They just have a lot going on that makes a lot of sense. Um, we'll go over the standings. So mob in number one, Buzzsaw in second place. They're three and one, three wins, one loss. Wrath three and one, third place. T- well, tied for second place. Then uh, two teams tied for third. You have um, Ozone versus Slashers. Uh, Ozone and the Slashers, I should say. Ozone one and two, Slashers one and two. Then three teams don't have a win. Rumble, Griffins, and the Lava. Uh, they they each have two losses. So it's only the first week. Don't be too hard on those teams. Like I tell you, I'll tell you right now, the Lava, good team, good team. The, they'll be good. They got potential. The Griffins, they'll be good. The Rumble, patchwork. That looks like a patchwork operation. So they got to prove me wrong on that one. But I, I like the Lava and the Griffins to win some games. So you know, there's some week two picks. If you go to uh, pick'em.slamballleague.com. Uh, when they post those, you'll be able to fill out your picks. Up next is Joe. I hope you enjoyed this portion of the show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your best friend. Tell everybody you know Preston's Super Show is the best on the go. Just like the hands of Don, I'm turning it over to you. Good night and God bless. Palms 37-4. What is going on, you guys? Joe Perry here with another weekly stock picks. Took the week off last week. Let the dust settle. But we're back, baby. And we're back with a really strong week and a really good update. I'm happy to be updating you guys. As always, I am not a financial advisor. These are strictly for entertainment 
and trading ideas. Please do your own homework and due diligence on anything you do. Protect your money. With that being said, let's get this bag. So, if we take a look at the Google Doc Sheet, last week's compared to this week, guys, we're up on everything. We're up on every portfolio. Grandpa's old stock port up 1.95%. The weekly swing up 1.3%. Our quick, our cheap trick quick flip. Is up 3.84%, baby, baby. Woo wee! I love it. And on top of all that, Colgate, which is in our grandpa's old stock port, they had given out right here. Here's the news right here. I'll read it to you. CL Colgate reported a USD 0.48 cents, so 48 cents per share supplementary dividend, X dividend. On Thursday, July 20th, guys, we collected 48, sh 48 cents because we only have one share. Well, we collected another 48 cents. You know what I'm saying? We're not even going to put it in our total because we're just going to try to keep it simple. But we collected a dividend, guys. We love to see it. The stock price is up, and it's keep going. And guess what? I want $80 out of Coldgate. Before we move on from Coldgate, because it's a little tough to trade Coldgate with only $100 in the portfolio for that one. It is, to be fair. I want 80 bucks out of it per share before we do anything. But we collect a dividend. Love to see it. Up almost 2%. I love it. Uh, and we're up after hours too. So, moving on. The weekly swing. INTC. Guys, we're doing great. Look at this. Can you believe it? The thing is, with, with uh, Intel, I want 40 out of it. I want high 30s. To forty dollars per share before we do anything with that, and uh, we're up almost one and a half percent, one point three percent on that one with only two and a half shares. Love to see it. Uh, we're gonna keep moving on. We picked it up at thirty three dollars and sixty cents. Right now we're sitting at thirty four dollars, and it's up after hours almost half a percent. Honestly, we're gonna keep pushing with that one. Um, I want high thirties, like I said, if not forty out of it. So we're going to keep playing with that one. I like to see it. Intel's a good company. Um, lots of room to grow. I think we got a really good entry price, to be honest. But once again, it's a little hard with 100 bucks. but we're going to keep going. Because the point of that one is, hey, it's the weekly swing. So that's the point of the portfolio. And lastly, the cheap trick up the most at 3.84%. Excellent, excellent, excellent week for us. We didn't sell. It, it was kind of a mellow week for us. Uh, INFI, uh, they had they went down, they went up, they went back down, then they leveled out to a little bit higher than what we picked it up at. And uh, see, what's going on with INFI is Infi uh, Infinity Pharmaceuticals, they're looking to merge with MEI Pharmaceuticals. And Infinity Pharmaceuticals and their shareholders has already agreed to the merger. We're just waiting on MEI and their board of directors and whoever else needs to be involved with the merger to say yes. But once they do, short term and medium term, INFI is going to pretty much explode because MEI has a lot of, they have a lot of things in their pipeline that are really moving towards you know, getting ready to go out to the market type of thing. And I, INFI has their own stuff. So when you when you merge that comp, those two companies together, it's going to be like, it's not going to be a powerhouse. But I mean, you can expect a good run because now, let's say they had like four drugs in the pipeline. Well, now they have like 12 because they just merged with another company that has their own eight. You know what I'm saying? So honestly, INFI, we want, I really want 40 cents per share of it. We're going to trade ourselves all the way up to it. It's called the Cheap Trick Quick Flip for a reason. We do a lot of flipping. And that, that's what also brings me to, guys, I have a Patreon, Immortal Picks. We're going to link it in the description. It's got all of our socials. The links are there. Our music, our music videos, everything's there. Preston's book. So honestly, if you go in the description of these, these podcasts, there's a lot more. There's stuff there, man. There's, qual there's quality stuff in there. So... I have a Patreon, and on my Patreon, I'm giving out one pick a week that's not on the weekly stock picks, and during the week, if I am flipping during the cheap cheap trick session, I'll be posting those picks there, 
because I won't be post. There's nowhere to post on the podcast. We do the podcast once a week. So that's where if you want to really follow along, get on the Patreon. It's two dollars, two dollars a month. Get on the Patreon, and you can follow along, make some money with me. And like I said, I have one pick that's on there that's not a part of this. Okay, that was actually up over four percent. My first pick was up over four percent. The second pick's going up today, Monday. Open market open, and. Like I said, if I'll be flipping, I'll be announcing on there, this is what I'm doing. And you won't know until the next week on the podcast what I did. You can follow along, obviously, but you can see like the precise actual flips. If I do flips, they'll be posted on the Patreon. All right, guys, that's all for me. Thanks for listening. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for checking out the podcast. If you can follow along, congrats because we're all up. Preston, thanks for having me on. Guys, let's get this bag. Peace.